So the Z06 and the E-Ray are now on the market. And if you haven't put your name on a wait list at this point, you're probably gonna be waiting about three years to get one. And at that level of wait time, unless you are willing to pay a pretty significant amount over MSRP, it's honestly worth switching your focus to the upcoming ZR1. Now the ZR1 hasn't officially been announced, but it's soon to be, and making moves now will give you the best chance to lock one in the next three years. And I'm gonna show you some of the best strategies I found to make that happen. So let's get into that video. So thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do Corvette product reviews, how-to videos, news, and the occasional car rally and car show. So if that's something that interests you and you find this video useful, I invite you to subscribe to the channel as well as like this video. It does help me know that this kind of information is both useful to you as well as help grow the channel. So thank you for that. So like I said, the new Z06 and E-Ray are now out on the market and orders are starting to be taken. But if you haven't gotten on a list already at this point, your wait time is probably gonna be about three years or longer. And I'm gonna admit, I came into the game way too late to try to get a Z06 or E-Ray especially at MSRP. And honestly, even if I found one that didn't have such crazy markup, honestly, it's not gonna be built exactly the way I want it to. So I'd end up compromising on a, on a whole bunch of things. But what do you think? Do you have your name on a Z06 or E-Ray and a ZR1? Or are you looking just at the ZR1? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to know. So my own personal focus is now trying to get a ZR1. By the time it's announced and Alec and like, and all that stuff is figured out, it's gonna be about three years, which is about the same time as getting a Z06 or E-Ray at MSRP. Now the question then turns to is, what's the best strategy to be able to get your hands on one? And that can be up to a lot of different opinions. And unless you have a relationship with a dealership and a salesman per like in particular with things under contract, the way I see it, there are two main strategies that you can undertake to make it happen. So before going into these strategies, it's important to get the, all the relevant data you need to do and like to do that. And by data, I mean all the different Chevy, and like Chevy dealerships, as well as allocations, both of Stingrays and Z06s, or, and even potentially E-rays in the upcoming future. And that would take a lot of work, but thankfully, because I have to give those huge props out to a guy out on, by the name of Smithers on Corvette Forum, he actually made a website that actually pulls all that data for you already. It gives you all the information of all the different Corvette dealerships all the way up to this year in regards to their allocations and even has breakdowns of how many Z06s they've delivered along with a percentage of that. So that is all really good like data and huge props out to him for that. All right, definitely makes this kind of endeavor a lot easier. So the two strategies then from using all that data is basically to either go to a high volume dealership or go the polar opposite and go to a low allocation dealership. And there's pros and cons to each of them. So when it comes to the high allocation dealerships, some of them you can put your name on right now for a wait list, which is already starting to get pretty long. So you wanna get on one of those right away if they have it available, or they're waiting until the official announcement. Now that official announcement, at least when it comes to the larger dealerships, is the what you're gonna want to make sure you have everything prepared for. Because what it comes down to is that once Chevy does that announcement, you're gonna to need to have all the information ready for you to be able to either call or go to these dealerships to then put your name on a wait list in that regards. So going to places like Sioka or Malk Mulkin is going to have is going to be your best bet in regards to having that information ready to go. And it's one of those things, once that release date is official, you can go down the line and call all the different dealerships or email basically reaching out to all these different dealerships to get your name on one of those lists it's not going to just be the first one that you probably get on a list it might not be the second one but if you do like the top 10 there's a good chance that you can get your name on one of those lists if they haven't started it already and there's a few of the top 10s that i've already reached out to and have my name just on a call list or an actual wait list so i have my name on both of those so that's the general strategy that you can have to go through the bigger um, dealerships. There's a high chance that you can get your name on one of those, but at the same time, everybody's going to those. So that's, you have that pros of they do have definitely an allocation that's going to come through. 
and you can definitely more secure it through an MSRP type deal as one of those higher volume dealerships. But the con is everybody's going to those. So it can get pretty competitive to get one within a reasonable amount of time. Now, the polar opposite of that is going to the smaller dealerships where they maybe get one or two allocations of, for let's say the Z06. If they're only getting one or two allocations a year, those are the ones that nobody's really going to or checking out. And you actually have a good chance of being either like number one, two, three. The pros in regards to that is that there's definitely a whole bunch of dealerships all over that just maybe get a couple. But the challenge with those is that you need to make sure that you, if you do get yourself on one of those lists, most times they're gonna want you to have some kind of money put forward to lock your name on the wait list. And on top of that, you're going to definitely want to have your name on contract with the with the dealership to agree to a certain amount like MSRP or a certain small markup if they want to negotiate in that regards. But it's one of those things that's extremely important to have that contract. And honestly, it's important even if it's one of the bigger dealerships, but those generally because of reputation, they honor having MSRP. But that being said, especially for the ZR1, and the smaller dealerships, you definitely want to have your name on contract to make sure that they're not going to up the price because that's what's been happening with the Z06s. Um, and I foresee it happening with the E-Rays for a little, a little bit as well. So it's something to consider in regards to making sure you don't get shafted, that you wait three years with money deposited into a smaller dealership, they get the car in, and then they jack up the price. And it's been seen and noted throughout a whole bunch of different dealerships. So that is the pros and cons to that is, you need to make sure that you are able to get a, a contract with some of these smaller dealerships. And if they say they don't wanna do a contract, but they'll take your money and you're gonna be number one, that's a red flag right there because they're not gonna honor that price and they're all they're gonna do is take that delivery, they're gonna jack up the price and you're gonna be stuck either paying for it or having to walk away. Definitely wouldn't don't wanna have that happen. For me personally, I like both strategies and I already set myself on a wait list for some of the bigger dealerships already. And I'm starting to now look into smaller dealerships for potentially getting on contract. So, and that's, and that's the goal for me personally. That's why I'm focusing on getting a ZR1 and not a Z06 or E-Ray. If one does come up and the stars align both with what I want on the car and it's not too much of a markup or whatnot, then I might pull the trigger for a Z06 or an E-Ray. But at this current moment, I'm pretty happy with my C8. I honestly like doing a whole bunch of these different product reviews. So speaking of product reviews, if you like this video, please check out any of my other videos and we'll see you next time.